When Bridgerton dropped on Netflix in 2020, it became a surprise pop sensation. With numerous award nominations, lavish costume design and a pretty big viewership, it came as no surprise to anyone in TV land that Netflix decided to renew this one. For anyone who read my season 1 review and subsequent recaps, I wasn't wrapped up in the magic of it all. There were moments of brilliance in this period drama no doubt, but the overlong runtime felt meandering at times, not helped by a smattering of subplots that felt underdeveloped and lack substance. Does season 2 rectify those issues? Well yes and no. The main romance this time between Anthony and Kate is going to be a big talking point, and honestly, their chemistry is off the charts. While they may not have the same gorgeous looks of Simon Bassett, subjectively of course, Anthony and Kate more than make up for that with their lustful longing gazes and various verbal duels. Some of the material these two have to work with is so well written and easily the highlight of the whole show. However, this isn't a straightforward fairy tale romance like the first season was. Instead, Bridgerton tackles the oft overused love triangle trope, but manages to spice things up nicely, with a distinct lack of misunderstandings thrown in. Sure, there's the sudden events that stop Kate and Anthony from kissing, but instead, that's replaced by a much more palpable and enjoyable romantic drama. The crux of the issue here stems from Kate's sister Edwina, who is promised to wed Anthony, and the pair look set to start their betrothal. Only, Anthony has no romantic feelings toward her, and simply sees this as a way of doing his family's duty. So when he starts to fall for Kate, things take a wild turn, and the whole thing sets up a scandalous affair that looks set to explode at any moment. Most of this season tackles their romance and helps to flesh both characters out. We get some much-needed flashbacks looking at Anthony's past in episode 4, while some rare bouts of vulnerability laid on from both Kate and Anthony, does absolute wonders for both their characters. Likewise, Penelope gets a good amount of development this year too. After the reveal that she's Lady Whistledown, there was always the danger that this story would sour. Instead, she spends most of the season trying to avoid suspicion, while also showing how sneaky she's been to get the news out and keep up her alter ego going. However, Penn's problems are exacerbated when the Queen remains dead set on figuring out who Lady Whistledown is, setting a trap to ensnare whomever this may be. With episodes clocking in at upwards of 75 minutes, there's an awful lot of runtime to fill, and unfortunately alongside these two storylines, the show continues to meander through subplots that don't really add anything to the show. While well, Mondrich opens up a gentleman's club, and the whole angle is just boring. Nothing of note happens, and it feels like a way of giving the men something to do. Likewise, Benedict and Colin both have interesting enough angles, but their development doesn't really lend itself to anything other than a juxtaposition of their fate compared to Anthony. There's also a subplot involving the Featherington family, but outside of Penelope and what's going on with her, the whole thing just feels like a waste. The few ideas about class and how they're faring compared to the Bridgertons is largely reduced to comedic quips and one long, drawn-out story that goes nowhere. This is by far the biggest disappointment when it comes to subplots to be honest, given there's actually some potential and a good deal of build-up. But after what is essentially a marginally longer story than season 1, the time spent with these guys doesn't justify the obvious outcome. The lavish production design and costuming are both as exquisite as they were the first time around, and there's no doubt that this is one good-looking show. The classical renditions of pop songs are still here, but this time it does feel a tad overkill at times. That goes for a couple of cheeky fourth-wall-breaking moments which feel really oddly placed too. In episode 1 Lady Danbury straight up mentions how lots has changed compared to last season. While it's befitting for the scene, it also feels like a subtle jab at the audience to relieve their Simon Bassett hangover. At the end of the day, Bridgerton is still a frothy, cliched soap opera dressed as a period drama. There's the usual tropes, ideas and character squabbles you'd expect, but this time with two excellent storylines propping up a couple of meandering subplots. Thankfully, the icy cold depths of those stories are combated by the red-hot passion and intensity fueling Kate and Anthony's love. That was what kept me invested right the way through the show, and undoubtedly will be what keeps you watching until the end. 
season two is not perfect, and pacing issues are something a lot of Shondal and productions have suffered with. Bridgerton is no exception. However, the added dose of tense drama and a red-hot romance make this a guilty pleasure follow-up that's a marginal improvement over the first. Episode 1 of Bridgerton Season 2 starts with a brand new season about to dawn. With a cheeky bit of fourth wall breaking, the Queen wonders what's happening with Lady Whistledown. They haven't heard from her since last season, their words, and try to work out where she is. Well, Penelope is still knocking about, but she's keeping a low profile in the Featherington household. Lady Featherington is still awaiting a lord to help take over the house. With the aforementioned season about to begin, just like season one we see a whole bunch of people meeting the queen, walking through the throne room and trying to impress her. One among those who's desperate to make a good impression is Eloise. She breathes heavily, struggling to take steps forward. Thankfully she's saved by a message from Lady Whistledown, which arrives by tray and is presented to the Queen and the many others in attendance. So what's going on with Whistledown? Apparently she's been honing her skills Aka, sharpening her knives to help hatch her next plan. Given how Penelope doesn't arouse any suspicions from those around her, she plays the part well, wanting to know exactly who the Queen is going to choose as her latest diamond. Your move, Your Majesty. Anthony ends up meeting a brand new character this year, racing a woman across the vast countryside. When he eventually catches up with her, she doesn't reveal her true name and simply rides away. Well, this woman happens to be called Kate, who's the eldest daughter of Miss Sharma. There's also her younger sister, Edwina too. The Sharma family are new in town and Lady Danbury intends to help Edwina find a prospective match at the upcoming ball this season. Kate has no desire to marry, a handsome stranger arriving before the season, with no desire to marry despite flirting with one of the main characters? Hmm, who does this remind you of? Anyway, Kate is there to help Edwina, reassuring the young woman and helping to get her dressed for the ball. Naturally, all the other women start gossiping about their origins, as Kate notices Anthony from afar, pointing out that he's the most prominent bachelor this season. While Edwina is called off for a dance, Kate watches from afar. Her opinion of Anthony sours, though when he hears him outside, discussing with the men what he's looking for in a match. He doesn't care too much about love, but does want someone with an acceptable wit and good looks. Eventually Kate confronts him and takes offense to his attitude, pointing out it's as boss as his horse-riding skills. Boom, take that Mr. Bridgerton. Penelope continues to work around the periphery of the ball, listening into various bites of gossip. It's a delicate balancing act, especially as we now she's whistled down, and here we see her hurrying off to see her distributor, who brings out 800 copies for the lofty sum of 11 pounds. Plan puns and scathing assessment of the season ahead, Whistledown also urges the Queen to make her choice over who the season's diamond is going to be. The Queen, though, refuses to be swayed. In the middle of this, Kate happens to be a diamond in the rough, with no bachelors willing to be with her. She's also confronted by Lady Danbury too though, who calls her out for a morning ride and questions her intentions. It turns out the real intentions here are for Edwina to marry a noble Englishman to try and regain the honor lost on the family's name. The Sheffields have agreed to bestow a dowry on Edwina and look after her mother, but only if Edwina marries properly. Neither of them are aware of this, given Kate has been conspiring behind both of their backs. If Kate could marry two to help her mother, she would. For now though, her dedication lies with helping Edwina and making sure she's taken care of. But would her sister still think the same of her, if she knew the truth? Danbury presses this question on Kate, urging her to open up and tell her sister the truth. Kate wants to keep this a secret though, believing it would crush her and cause problems. But will it stay a secret? The queen makes her decision and chooses her diamond. Edwina Sharma. Anthony Bridgerton soon shows up to interrupt this task her for a dance. However, there's also big drama in the Featherington household as the new lord arrives all the way from America. But it also means big changes afoot. And nowhere else is that more apparent than in Whistledown's change of heart. Her latest letter condemns the whole notion of the diamond, pointing out that all women can be great in their own. Episode 2 of Bridgerton Season 2 starts with Lady Whistledown turning her attention to Edwina Sharma and her thorny, 
prickly sister Kate. Kate is quick to point out Anthony's arrogant behavior and quite literally shuts the door on his advances in trying to court Edwina, given she's this year's diamond. Meanwhile, Eloise is hung up over Whistledown's latest letter and doesn't share Penn's enthusiasm that things are changing. Eloise continues to chase who Whistledown is, noticing the paper and also the printing company too. So naturally, she heads off to track the place down. Noticing the insignia on the top of the door at the address, she knows she's in the right place. Eloise belittles the worker outside, whom we later learn is called Theo Sharp, and he eventually hands over a flyer for women's rights and leaves. The new Lord Featherington has some rather dubious and questionable choices about the house too, including turning the morning room into his own personal gaming hell. Much like the Bridgertons, the attention here turns to the royal races. Everyone shows up, including Lady Danbury in a stunning red dress. Whilst there, Thomas Dorset escorts Kate, but she's not best pleased when Anthony shows up and persists in trying to get close to her sister. Eventually he ends up sitting next to Edwina, watching the race with her, much to Kate's disdain. The races don't go to plan, despite some of the attendees winning handsomely, as Kate tries her best to shield Edwina from Kate. Edwina eventually sees herself before Queen Charlotte who actually picked her to be a diamond for a very specific purpose. The Queen want to unmask who Lady Whistledown is, and part of that comes from using Edwina, knowing the writer will want access to her. So naturally, the Queen is going to keep an eye on Edwina from here on out. After being rejected by Edwina again, showing up at her door with a horse and misunderstanding her earlier love for a novel, Anthony struggles to work out how to win over Edwina. There are plenty of other bachelors at Lady Danbury's that night, each with their own different gimmicks and ways to try and woo Edwina. None seem to work though, as she strains a smile through all this. After meeting Penelope and commenting on her yellow dress, she catches up with Colin. Only, he throws her in the friend zone, pointing out how a good friend she is. As the evening comes to a close, Anthony is a late arrival and decides to read a letter he's written out for Edwina. These aren't his words though, and eventually he gives up pretending to be someone he's not. Anthony speaks from the heart and tries to be himself, pointing out his vulnerabilities for all to see. He promises when it comes to duty and action, he'll be there for Edwina, but can't guarantee that he'll love her the way she wants. While Kate wants to try and shield her sister, Edwina's taken with Anthony and the pair wind up talking. While they do, Kate takes off after a prolonged stare, where she and Anthony catch one another's gaze. Danbury tries to talk Kate around while Penn realizes she's getting closer to being found out. Eloise has figured out the printing house, and not only that, she's also deciphered that the K on those letters is a giveaway. So naturally, Penelope decides to try and write that wrong, but she's spotted down at the market by Madame Delacroix. As the episode closes out, Queen Charlotte receives a list of names and pictures to boot for all those who have conversed with Edwina. And Penelope is one of the Episode 3 of Bridgerton Season 2 starts 10 years ago with a hunting trip. Anthony is taught about patience and confidence by his father. After failing to shoot a deer, Anthony and his dad head back to the house, but there's a problem. Edmund is stung by a bee and has an adverse reaction, clawing at his neck and struggling to breathe. As he looks up at Violet, the light fades from his eyes and he passes away. Anthony is right there, witnessing it all, but he's told to head off and shield the other women from this. This incident occurred up at Orry Hall, the ancestry home that Anthony has invited the Sharma family to come and visit. Lady Whistledown believes that this could well lead to a marriage proposal. For now though, the carriage arrives carrying Edwina and Kate. While they travel, Anthony meets with his family including Daphne and asking for their help in winning Edwina and helping to stop the gatekeeper Kate from interfering. Kate is prickly on entrance, despite Anthony promising to improve her opinion of him by the end of the stay. Violet takes Anthony aside and urges him to get to know Edwina properly. Anthony refuses, and as he fingers the ring he's going to give Edwina, he contemplates whether this is the right course of action or not. For now, a game of croquet takes place, but Kate ends up using Anthony's mallet. She teases him about it, likening him to a child with a blanket. 
Anthony is way off the mark with his shots, while Kate does a great job. Edwina decides to bail when her ball ends up amongst the trees, sending Kate and Anthony out together to fetch their balls. After falling together in mud and laughing about their folly, the pair talk plainly about their desire to protect family. Unfortunately, Kate smacks her ball into a bench, ending the game completely. This happens to be the spot where Edmund was buried, and as we see from flashbacks, Anthony has had the weight of the world on his shoulders for a long time. The memory of his father is just too painful to bear. Back in town, Lady Featherington decides to pass on the responsibilities of marriage to Prudence, encouraging her to get married to Jack Featherington. Penn can only watch from afar and despair. That much is especially apparent when she watches Prudence having her dress fitted and fussing over the fitting. Predictably, this bit of comic relief doesn't really go anywhere, with Lord Featherington having no interest in Prudence. Instead, his gaze casts further afield to Cressida. He even invites her out at dinner, right in front of Lady Featherington and Prudence, who can only smile weakly. Edwina and Anthony eventually get talking in the sitting room, with the pair discussing their interests. They're actually quite different, but they do get on well, with a nice sense of humor between them. When Daphne speaks to Anthony about love and how all-consuming it is, Anthony finds himself reflecting on his choice. Does he feel this way about Kate? Regardless, Anthony continues to be burdened by his desire to do right by his family. He's also haunted by the memory of his father too, which weighs him down as the wedding proposal draws nearer. At dinner the two families gather, with Daphne remarking how similar Kate and Anthony's background are. Benedict happens to be stoned, thanks in part to Colin's calming medicine given to him earlier on. All of this is overshadowed when Anthony has second thoughts and decides not to propose after all. Meanwhile, Lady Whistledown gives a scathing assessment of Cressida and her dress in the morning telegram, going on to point out how capable Madame Delacroix is. Penn arrives to see the dressmaker and decides to help with her business in exchange for keeping her secret. So the pair continue to work together for the foreseeable future. As the episode closes out, Anthony meets with Kate and admits that she wants Edwina to be happy. When a bee ends up on her chest and stings her, Anthony breathes heavily and finds himself panicking. Kate holds his hand, bringing it up to her chest and urging him to calm. The pair lock eyes. They look set to kiss and then their horse whinnies and distracts them. Episode 4 of Bridgerton Season 2 starts with everyone preparing for the annual Hearts and Flowers Ball, hosted by Lady Bridgerton. It's a massive event, with lots of people invited. This party is the talk of the town. Of course, there's also the matter of marriage too, which seems to be looming ever nearer. However, Kate and Anthony's intimate moment together is likely to cause a lot of problems. Both Kate and Anthony are still torn over what's happening, with Kate in particular feeling guilty given Edwina's growing affection for Anthony. For now though, everyone busies themselves with the big party, as Eloise continues to try and figure out who Lady Whistledown is. Penn strains a smile. Kate joins Anthony and Edwina as they sit together and talk. Edwina encourages Anthony to show Kate around the grounds, but he refuses, pointing out that he's going hunting instead. So naturally, Kate is encouraged to tag along as well, much to Anthony's disdain. As they ride together, Anthony learns that her skills were honed back in India. The pair have clear chemistry together, with long gazes exchanged as they ride. When Kate wanders off on her own, believing their guide is leading away from the deer, Anthony notices and chases after her. With Kate's maid lagging behind, Anthony helps Kate hold her gun, but in doing so, the pair start breathing heavily, as sparks look set to fly. However, Jack arrives and breaks everything up, prompting them to return to the group. Colin looks in to see Marina, wanting to apologize for what happened between them. After his travels in Greece, he ends up gaining the favor of Philip, who's happy and content with Marina, marveling at his travels. Colin is still torn over how he feels about Marina, and after congratulating her for being amiable, she points out that she's content in her marriage. She suggests Colin turn his attention to someone who really cares for him like Penelope. Back at the estate, Anthony and Kate end up talking that night. Anthony reveals how his father passed away, and the pair refrain from kissing again. It's not a horse whinny this time, it's a thunderclap. 
the night's events take place and as the music starts, Lord Morrison ends up dancing with Eloise. However, Eloise isn't taken with him, given his prudish attitude, and she eventually leaves the dance floor. She heads upstairs, sobbing, rejecting Penelope and leaving the Bridgerton family in disarray for the time being. Meanwhile, Lord Featherington is taken with Cressida Croper, leading Lady Featherington to try and encourage his matchup with Prudence. On the dance floor, Edwina encourages Anthony to dance with Kate in order to gain her blessing and prepare for their marriage. The thing is, Kate is leaving and heading back to India as soon as Edwina marries. When he hears this, Anthony is crushed and leaves the dance floor, clearly disheartened. In private, Kate and Anthony end up talking, with the former admitting that he vexes her. However, as they stand together, on the cusp of kissing, they're interrupted again, but this time by Daphne. Daphne realizes what's happening and likens the similarities to what happened between her and Simon, this show isn't even being subtle about this now, and tells Anthony that these things have a way of surfacing eventually. There's a big scandal involving Lady Featherington setting up Prudence, claiming they're together behind Cressida's back. The reality as we come to learn later on is that the new lord is actually penniless, and in order to secure livelihood for the family, he wanted to marry royalty. Unfortunately, Lady Featherington has completely messed that up now. As the episode closes out, Anthony makes his decision and in front of Kate, decides to marry her. He even puts the ring on her. The thing is, this very clearly is not where his heart lies. Episode 5 of Bridgerton Season 2 starts with Anthony doing his utmost to put his feelings for Kate aside. That's not easy, given the glances the pair are exchanging, as Queen Charlotte decides to play host to their marriage. The Queen is going to oversee every single detail, intending to figure out who Lady Whistledown is once and for all. The thing is, Kate is clearly flustered, but she plays the role of sister well, despite how painful this may be. Meanwhile, issues at the Featherington household reaches fever pitch. Debts are piling up and those inside the house are in real danger of falling down the social ladder. So naturally, Lady Featherington brings in a man named Mr. Brooks to look over her jewelry and gain an evaluation. Only, they're complete counterfeits, and Jack is worried this could come back and blow up in her face. For now, they pass the initial evaluation without a hitch, with Brooks believing the necklace is real. Back at the Bridgerton household, Anthony and Kate find themselves at tea together, where Kate questions Anthony's motivations. He decides to just ignore everything that happened, dismissing the incident at Aubrey Hall as nothing. However, when Mr. Brooks arrives and helps fit Edwina's ring, using Kate's finger, the pair touch hands. That is until Edwina shows up. The pair are flustered, and even more so when they learn the Sheffields have arrived to oversee proceedings. And they've also been invited to dinner too. Lady Danbury consents that Kate's feelings are conflicted, and reassures her that the wedding is pretty much all but done now. Only a big scandal would stop that. Interestingly, Mr. Dorset arrives to take Kate out onto the lake the following day. Anthony ends up looking on from afar, an envious look in his eyes. When the pair talk again, Anthony helps Kate out the boat, but they linger while holding hands, and then he trips over her dog and falls in the water with Dorset. The sisters can't help but look at Anthony's see-through shirt. Eloise arrives at a women's rights rally where she ends up talking to Theo Sharp, Another Bridgerton who's starting to make headway in his life is Benedict, who finds himself taking a fancy to the model at his art class. That night, Violet speaks to Anthony and points out that he should be happy about his marriage. Anthony's mopey attitude makes it seem like he's going to the gallows instead. Anthony can't go back on his word of course, but he does perk up when Violet suggests Edwina could call off the marriage. If that were to happen, then no one would really bat an eyelid. Violet wants him to make the right choice, but also doesn't want him to live the rest of his life in regret. Lord and Lady Sheffield meet Edwina over dinner, where everything kicks off. Lady Sheffield revels in telling everyone about the trust fund set up, and how Edwina must marry a man of good English breeding to inherit it. Unfortunately, neither Mary nor Edwina have been informed of Kate's deal, and it leads to an awkward bit of misunderstanding. Anthony eventually speaks up and forces Lord and Lady Sheffield out, promising not to let them inherit a single penny now. 
When Anthony looks to leave too, Kate takes him aside and urges him to understand that Edwina is innocent. Bearing in mind the door is open while they talk, Anthony points out that she's the bane of his existence and also the object of his desires too. K2 feels the same way as their love looks set to become all-consuming. As they're set to kiss, Anthony pulls away and points out that this marriage must not go ahead. If it does, he'll spend the whole time thinking and dreaming of Kate rather than Edwina. Unfortunately, this whole affair is made all the more complicated by Edwina speaking to Kate later that evening. She admits she's in love with Anthony, especially after his valiant display of honor at dinner, and it causes this whole messy affair to become that much more difficult going forward. With a scandal on the horizon, Anthony rides out into the woods and speaks to Kate about what he intends to do. He's going to call off the wedding completely. Kate urges him to reconsider as their feelings will pass over time. She doesn't want to see his honor besmirched and also doesn't want Edwina to be unhappy either. Kate's passionate plea is enough for Anthony to have a change of heart and decide to get married after all. When he rides off, Kate can barely hold back her Episode 6 of Bridgerton Season 2 starts with Queen Charlotte dead set on making this event the absolute best wedding it possibly can be. Part of that comes from the Queen trapping our author, intending to find Lady Whistledown and discover her true identity. We are up to the eve of the wedding, and part of that comes from Anthony deciding to push up the date. You can sense he's just trying to get it over with, slipping into bitter regret already. It's also not helped by both Benedict and Colin being free to pursue their love interests. For Anthony though, it's all about doing his family duties. Meanwhile, Madame Delacroix arrives with news for Penelope. She feeds back that Theo Sharp is the guy from the printing company and who Eloise was talking to last episode. Penelope is worried, with the weight of Lady Whistledown's identity in danger of being compromised completely. However, Eloise claims that she's only seeing Theo for his friendship, although Penelope is not convinced. In the morning, everyone prepares for the big wedding. While everyone just continues on like nothing's wrong, Daphne knows better than most the notion of pretending to be in love. She calls out Anthony's changed behavior in private, needing to do right by the family and fighting for the Bridgerton name. Daphne urges him to follow happiness and try to make the most of his life, going on to tell him the family pity his choices, given how much they pain him to make. With those words rattling around in his mind, Anthony arrives at the church ready to be betrothed to Edwina. Kate shows first, with Anthony watching on. As the ceremony gets underway, Anthony can't help but look at Kate and see her in the wedding dress rather than Edwina. When Kate's bracelet snaps, Anthony bends down to help, but their lingering look together causes Edwina to bolt out the room. Edwina senses that their love for one another is pure, and with the whole room in uproar, Kate hurries after her sister. In private, she questions Kate's feelings for Anthony, sensing that she's in love but hiding it. Everything goes awry, with Violet realizing that Daphne is keeping this very revelation a secret. Not only that, the Queen holds Lady Danbury responsible for this whole marriage messing up, concerned about Whistledown writing about the wedding and how poor her choice of diamond was. However, her plan to find Whistledown's identity will continue on. Meanwhile, Anthony speaks to Edwina and tells her it's her choice whether to marry or not. There's no love between them though, only commitment and necessary bonds that they're both bound to. Kate also reassures her, telling Edwina that her destiny lies with this marriage and bounding their two families together. Edwina bites back though, reassuring Kate that if she decides to go ahead with this marriage it'll be because it's what she wants for her own happiness and not anything to do with her. Speaking of scandal, while Lady Featherington continues to try and set Jack and Prudence up together, Jack ends up flirting with Lady Featherington in private. Another promising matchup is that of Penn and Colin, with the latter finally starting to understand Mariana's words about Penelope several episodes ago. Edwina is gathered before the royals, but as she's about to speak her piece, George comes bounding into the room wanting more fireworks. Edwina manages to talk him down, but also brings up the notion of love and deciding that everyone deserves to make their choice in the face of great adversity. This leaves Edwina with a very difficult choice to make. A letter is sent to both Kate and Anthony, urging them both to meet in the chapel in private. 
Irina wants to call off the marriage. She can't marry Anthony just for roles or for family prestige. Instead, she wants what he and Kate have, and that comes from calling off the wedding completely. When Edwina leaves, Kate and Anthony finally let themselves feel what they've been feeling all season long and kiss. Episode 7 of Bridgerton Season 2 starts Lady Whistledown commenting on the current state of affairs. Unfortunately, she also throws shade at the Queen, claiming it's her fault this has happened on such a grand stage. This is essentially akin to kicking the hornet's nest, and the Queen doubles down on trying to find Whistledown and she believes she's found her. The queen arrives to see Eloise, calling her out for being Whistledown. She's seen her at the printing shop and believes that they could team up together to change society. When Eloise rejects that, claiming that she's not Whistledown, the queen turns hostile and decides to class her as a rival. She gives Eloise three days to come to her senses, and in that time she needs to decide what to do about this. If not, the queen promises to crush her, when Eloise heads back inside, she tells Penelope what's going on. Her sneaking out and seeing Theo has been misconstrued, as Pen deciding to take matters into her own hands. Unfortunately, coming up against the Queen is not without its risks, and Delacroix believes that the only way out of this to save Eloise is for her to write something scandalous about Eloise. That way, it would take the prying eyes of the Queen off of her. Only, Penn is conflicted over whether to throw her friend under the bus or not. With the scandal still hanging over the family, the Sharmas head out with Lady Danbury, keeping a stiff upper lip and brushing off any hostility or snarky comments from all those in attendance. Meanwhile, the Bridgertons also head out, and they too have the same intent, wanting to keep the scandalous wedding fallout as nonchalant as possible, in order to ride the wave of public opinion. So naturally, an awkward afternoon ensues as Kate and Anthony do their best to keep their distance from one another. Eventually though, Kate whispers to Anthony that they should forget their kiss, believing it to be an awful thing. Eloise shows up to see Theo that afternoon, wanting to get their story straight. Theo is worried, given what trouble he's currently in with the palace. Eventually he tells her to head back to the palace, not wanting to engage any further. In doing so, Eloise decides to out herself as Whistledown and lie, claiming to be an ally, and buying herself some more time to find the real Lady Whistledown and make her pay for her crimes. So naturally, Penn makes a bold decision to class Eloise as a political radical in her latest letter, deflecting the attention away from her friend. It's a damaging blow for the family and for Penn's friendship which hangs in the balance. And from the brief shots of Penelope by the fire, throwing her papers in and crying, it's something that pains her so. That night, Anthony meets with Kate again, and admits his family are on the brink of ruin. He's found himself only able to think of Kate, though. He's completely and madly in love with her. The smell of lilies has consumed him, and as they both look at one another, they end up kissing again. This time, getting hot and heavy, undressing one another and eventually having sex after some foreplay. Cor, what a steamy scene. In the morning, with rain lashing down, Kate rides out on her horse to escape. Only, Anthony follows and watches in horror as Kate falls off her horse and smacks her head hard on the floor. Episode 8 recap and finale, following Kate's accident, Anthony rushes to Kate's aid and carries her back to the mansion. Meanwhile, Portia forbids Penelope from going anywhere near Eloise. And with the upcoming Featherington Ball in due course, Portia wants to show off how well her family is doing. As Eloise receives confirmation from Theo that Lady Whistledown uses the store to print her letters, Queen Charlotte blames Eloise for the wedding failing to go ahead. When Lord Jack realizes that his scheme will not work for much longer, she suggests that he and Portia travel to America. Kate finally wakes up, although Anthony believes that he is emotionally unable to see Kate. In an attempt to put an end to Eloise's obsession with Lady Whistledown, Penelope claims that servants are gossiping about her. Anthony finally visits Kate, and she asks her to marry her. Kate rejects his proposal. Instead, she says that she will be returning to India. Eloise and Theo nearly kiss, but she backs out. Has Lady Whistledown's scandal lowered her confidence? The Featherington Ball begins.
Penelope continues to eavesdrop on people's gossip, and just after Eloise calls Penelope a true friend, the penny finally drops for Eloise that Penelope is Lady Whistledown. The Sharma family joins the event, and Edwina forces Kate onto the dance floor. Colin dances with Prudence, takes her necklaces, smashes it up, and privately reveals to Portia that Lord Jack is a fraud. On the dance floor, as Wrecking Ball plays, Kate and Anthony give in to their feeling as all eyes watch them. What a scandal. That may be true, but Edwina thinks that they look beautiful, and on Queen Charlotte's orders, others begin to dance. And as they dance, Queen Charlotte suggests that Edwina would be a good match for her nephew, who also happens to be a prince. Penelope finds Eloise going through all of her things. It doesn't take long for Penelope to confess to being Lady Whistledown, and she claims she gave up her role as Lady Whistledown to protect Eloise. Eloise is having none of it, I look at you now, and all I feel is pity. In response, Penelope claims that at least she did something, unlike Eloise. Their friendship ends with Eloise telling her that she wishes to never speak or hear from her again. At the ending of episode 8, as the ball comes to a close, Portia tells Lord Jack that she has instructed the maids to help him leave. And that unlike his desire to go with her, he will, in fact, be going to America alone. In a shock, Portia screws Lord Jack over and claims that as there's a record that she paid into the scheme, she will be a victim. And so, Lord Jack must leave Mayfair with nothing. Penelope looks for Eloise, but instead, finds Colin claiming that he would never dream of courting Penelope. After Anthony and Kate confess their love for each other, Penelope starts work on her next issue, this author cannot stay quiet for long. The second season of Bridgerton ends with a time jump of six months. Anthony and Kate are now married. And after they join the family for a game of Pall Mall, they kiss. Bridgerton bows out with a conclusive final chapter, one that wraps up almost all the big plot points, while also leaving everything open for a follow-up on the horizon. The show has been slightly overlong, which is something a lot of Shondaland productions are plagued with, honestly, do we need all those episodes of Inventing Anna? But it's undoubtedly been enjoyable to watch. The romance between Anthony and Kate is actually felt stronger and with more chemistry than Daphne and Simon, at least from this reviewer anyway. Everything has flown nicely, and although the final episode does manage to tie everything up, it also leaves the drama involving Whistledown suitably open and a new romance on the horizon for season 3. However, the showrunner is stepping down after this season, so we could see the tone and direction of the show alter slightly. There have been some subplots this year that really haven't worked. The whole Gentleman's Club and Will Monrich have felt like an afterthought, hence their exclusion from most of these recaps, while Benedict's art school ventures never really go anywhere, beyond that big reveal at the end of course. Not only that, there's also the subject of Eloise who's all happy smiles and playing croquet at the end. Personally it would have been nice to see her exchange a horrible look at Penelope or something to hint toward their rivalry for the next season. Either way though, Bridgerton is bound to entertain fans, and there's certainly enough here to enjoy, what did you think of Netflix's Bridgerton season 2, share your thinking and the ending thoughts? In comments box, 